This is not a potentiometer, but a rotor encoder, and the value shown on the meter is its reading value. Today in this video, we will see how to interface rotor encoder using pulse counter peripheral using ESP32-S3 and LVGA library to display the encoder reading on an analog meter on the round TFT screen. We will go through the used code and explain every detail and learn the working principle of rotor encoders. We have a lot to display today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. They also have open source community, so there are many projects to have a look at. Link is in the description. All right, so here's my setup. Uh, here I'm having connect board that has ESP32 S3. Uh, I've designed this board before and ordered it from uh, PCBWay. I'm having my MCU connected to this round display that has a GC9A01 driver connected over SPI with uh, a clock frequency of uh, 20 megahertz. And here I'm using LVGA library in order to have this nicely looking uh, interface. The display resolution is 240 by 240 uh, pixels. And here I'm also having uh, a rotary encoder connected this side uh, to my MCU. And it has actually three functional pins, the clock, direction, and button. So when I rotate this knob, I can detect uh, the position of the knob and the direction of the rotation as well. So by rotating this knob, uh, I can change the value of the meter, as you can see. And also when pressing on the button, I can rotate the display, just like that. So here I'm using a pulse counter peripheral in order to interface uh, this rotor encoder. Uh, this peripheral is usually used for uh, measuring frequency uh, of a square signal. And of course, so it can be also used uh, for interfacing uh, the, in the rotor encoder. It has several applications. Of course, this rotor encoder can be also used uh, for other purpose like uh, menu navigation. And actually here I've modified the code. Uh, so when now I press on this button, I can change the background color uh, of the display. As you can see, I can switch it between black uh, and white. All right, so now we'll jump into the code and see uh, the steps in order to configure this display uh, with LVGA library uh, and interface this rotor encoder and see how both can work together. All right, so here's the firmware that's running on the esp 32 s 3 uh, and we can start with the main uh, and first of all we have the display initialization function uh, so here we can see that uh, first of all we are initializing uh, the SPI peripheral uh, as you may have noticed in the SP32 family it has the feature of uh, pin max so there is no specific pin uh, for this peripheral so I can pass any pin I want for uh, the SPI clock master output slave input master input slave output uh, of course, this is a big advantage, so you can use any pin uh, on your hardware. And after that, the pins that are used for uh, command and data selection, uh, chip select, the SPI uh, clock frequency, and the command and data, uh, data width, bitwise. And then, of course, these parameters uh, are used in order to initialize the uh, LCD driver. The LCD driver is a GC9A01 uh, display. This is actually specific for the round display to 240 by 240 pixel uh, display driver. And then we can see uh, the driver control commands uh, sent so it can be ready to use. So now let's get back to our main. And here we have the LVGL library configuration function. I've covered the LVGL initialization steps uh, in a previous tutorial. So let's uh, not repeat ourselves and focus on other parts. So here we have the encoder initialization function uh, and here I'm passing the uh, encoder callback function where I'm getting the value uh, of the no position uh, and the status of the no button. So let's see the uh, encoder initialization function. All right, so here in the encoder initialization function, uh, first we determine the limits 
that the encoder that is going to read so I have the limits between 0 and 100 which is exactly the same values that I will be having on the meter that's shown on the display uh, and here it's initialized and here of course I'm initializing uh, input GPIO in order to read the uh, knob button so if we have a look now at the uh, internal circuitry of the rotary encoder so here we have the clock and detection pin these pins will be generating uh, a square signal uh, with a phase difference so we can determine the direction of rotation and here we have the switch this switch is actually nothing but a button uh, pulled up to the VCC I'm connecting the VCC uh, to 3.3 volt and of course here we have the ground connection alright so let's get back to the uh, encoder initialization and here we have a glitch filter initialized after that we are selecting uh, the pins that we are going to use in order to read the square signals from the clock and the detection pins of the rotary encoder so here we have the uh, two channel configuration and after that and after that we have the edge detection action this will determine the behavior of the pulse counter uh, peripheral alright so right now let's have a look at the signals that got generated when rotating the knob of the rotary encoder alright so in the clockwise rotation direction we can see that in the rising edge of the A signal uh, the logic level in the B signal will be zero and you will notice that the B signal will have a delay in phase while in the counterclockwise rotation direction we see that at the rising edge of the B signal, the logic level at the A signal is zero. And by knowing this information, we can determine the direction of the rotation of the rotary encoder. And the pulse counter referral will do that for us. After that, we can add a watch point. So when the rotary encoder reaches a specific point, we get an event executed. You can select up to four watch points. Uh, but I currently I'm not using that feature and here we can see the uh, callback registration and the values will be transferred to the free Artos queue after that the peripheral uh, gets started so here I'm passing the uh, callback uh, from my main function so this callback will be executed uh, in the rotary encoder handler uh, task uh, and we can see this uh, in this task over here of course this task uh, gets created uh, in our main and we see it over here so this task will run four times a second uh, and every time it's executed uh, we read the value of the pulse counter and this value then uh, gets uh, passed uh, to the main over this callback so uh, our callback function this one uh, will be called I will be receiving the position of the rotary encoder and the status of its button and then uh, these values are passed to the LVGA library uh, so we can display that uh, on the round display so here I'm passing the value of the rotary encoder position uh, to the meter that was created before uh, and after that depending on the uh, button position uh, here I'm toggling the uh, background uh, color between white and black and here in a previous demonstration, I also showed uh, how to uh, rotate the display, uh, of course, depending on the position of the uh, button. I've actually went through the LVGL uh, library interface before, so I will put a link to that uh, tutorial over here if you have missed that out. Of course, this code that I've displayed today is shown on my uh, GitHub repository. You can uh, clone it from there. Uh, in the upcoming tutorial, I'm actually planning to uh, build a clock using uh, this display something similar to this one maybe uh, so stay tuned for that tutorial i will be also sharing the 3d printed knob that i've used on the rotary encoder and you can also have it from the github repository that i've shared uh, so yes this brings me to the end of this tutorial i hope that you have learned something new please tell your friends about use for electronics and share this tutorial with them stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial and bye bye